This is the KXSR Digital Broadcast Network. Get the insider scoop straight from the alleys of Hollywood and the Sunset Strip with your host, Kitty. A backlot look at pop culture, indie music, film, art, comedy, and more. Welcome to the Alley Cat Hour. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Alley Cat Hour here on Excite Radio. I'm your host, Kitty, and this is my dear friend, Alexis Iacono. She is a beautiful person, actress, and fellow psychotic. Um, (laughs) We actually met doing a radio interview that launched my experience here at Excite Radio, which I am forever grateful for, and we did that on Halloween. Yes, that was our first date. Yeah, it was very creepy. And in that vein, um, I would love to talk about your career. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, hang out with me and it'll never be a dull moment. Right. That was either going to be a hit or miss night for sure. Yeah. Um, Like your career. Like my career and (laughs) my personal life. (laughs) Um, Right. Yeah, speaking of personal lives, I know last week we spoke about upping the sex factor here. People really love my opinion. And okay. obviously, or they wouldn't be listening right now. Um, and I have a lot of opinions, and some of them about sex. So I promise that I will start working on um, a short little segment of sex advice. Would you listen to that? I would. Excellent. So yeah, between that and um, a dear friend of mine telling me that I needed more boobs on my show, uh, and I said, okay, fine. I, I agree, and that's why you're here tonight, because <laughs> you're the biggest boob I know. <laughs> And, oh, uh, so wait, brunch. you're not interviewing me. This right. is a roast. Yes. Oh, okay, great. You didn't get that? No, no I didn't oh. get that memo. She missed Please. the memo, Jason. Somebody roast me. I'm yeah. like, just, I don't care. Just you know, bring it. You are the only person to say that this week in Los Angeles. Uh, yeah, I'm 109, dude. Oh, my God. Shoot, we've, we've been yeah. in triple digits for like, what, like five or six days now? Yeah. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, it's finally, I mean, it's all nice. my cats are laying on their backs like this, <laughs> and not in a sexual way. It's in a I can't breathe or move because I'm so fluffy. If I exert any energy, I will spontaneously combust, and there will just be nothing but fur and guts all over my That's living amazing. room. Nice. Thanks. Thanks. Jason hates when I talk like that. Yeah, you're very dirty. I'm very, I am actually very dirty. So, um, anyway, I wanted to speak, um, like, getting back to kind of basics. It's been yeah. about a year um, since we were first on the radio. So, it's the middle of September. It's mm. hot as Hades. Hell, hell is scary. Scary stuff is frightening. Yes. Frightening stuff yes. is horrific. Horrific. And you do a lot of horror work. I do. I don't know how that happened. Not on the street. I just wanted to disclaimer. Not, not prostitution. Horror. It's horror. horror. I, I can't tell you horror. how many. The horror. The horror. The no, horror. I actually have to put my New York accent on because I say, oh, I'm in horror. And they're like, horror. I'm like, no, horror. And then all of a sudden, like, oh, it's horror. And I'm like. Do you ever so. have someone say, well, yeah, of course you are. I see that. I can totally, <laughs> absolutely. You're no, a actually, actually, <laughs> I've had people think that I'm, um, I, there's one, well, I thought it was a funny story. I went to a um, strip joined last year. Of course you did. We have some pictures. No, um, no. I, I you can put those. I don't know. Call me weird. I'm that girl like, you know, I you Just wear kidding. like that also. We, a friend of mine, we decided to go to a strip joint on Sunset Boulevard because we think music is cool and we just, Classy. whatever. Whatever. Yeah, it was one right. of those nights. So so I had to go to the uh, ladies room and I'm, I'm, I'm walking in the back and <laughs> this uh, the owner of the place is like, uh, what, what are you doing? Get on stage right now. What? Um, and I'm like this. I'm like, what? He's like, get, he's like, what are you doing? He's like, get on stage right now. I'm like, I, I, I. Did he think you were working? He thought I was a stripper. <laughs> and I'm what like, were you wearing? No, no, that was that was the weird part. For our listeners no, who are listening on the no. radio and not watching us live right now mm-hmm. on exciteradio.com via UStream, what are you wearing? You know me. I don't dress anything like You're that. You're kind of a tomboy, actually. I am kind of a tomboy. That's her stick. stick. That's my stick. Um, no, and and I looked, and I'm like, I'm like, I I I I'm a I don't work here. And he does this. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. He's like, I thought, 
did he offer you a job? <laughs> he does this, he does this. Do you want to? No, he does this. He's like, <laughs> he's like, do you want a job? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I was like, thought about it for a second, broke, and I'm like, nope, that's fine. I just, I just want to go to the girls' room and just be on my way. <laughs> but yes, um, Interesting. I've been asked. And then sometimes I get, for a second I'll get a porn star for a slight second until they travel their eyes to my a, boobs and uh, they're like, speaking you're, of, you're not a porn star. Like, what are you trying to say? <laughs> what am I trying to say? <laughs> okay, Playboy is one thing uh, and porn is another. This is true. And true quite story. frankly, I'm pretty sure, anyway, I'm not doing it obviously because if I were, uh, I'd be rolling up and bling and bling bling. <laughs> so they say, I don't even know what you call lots of money these days because it's been a while since I had some. So anyway, speaking of not having a ton of money, um, we are both in the entertainment industry and you started on stage just like I did when you were younger, right? Yes. Um, I I always did shows and, and I'm a hoofer at trade and people don't She's know. She's a hooker. Oh no, here we go again. Goes back. Oh. You get a guinea and a Greek in mm. a room together, so and you're just not gonna. Horror. The the conversations are not gonna end. So we'll start, anyway, not end. you started on stage. So back started in on New York. stage. Uh, born and raised in New York. Born in New York City. Raised in Bayside, Queens. Yeah. Uh, Long Island, and um, I, it just. I always loved theater. I always loved film, mm. and um, my break my breakthrough role was. Uh, performing and, and playing Fay Ray on stage as a young girl. That was my breakthrough role. And Fay Ray was the ori original screaming woman in King Kong. Right. Which <laughs> she, I mean, she she got that role and just, I, she made the genre, really. Yes, and it's funny how it, it does come full circle for me. Um, had I known years later that I would be in the same genre as her, never would have thought about it. I, I didn't. I, I'm really, um, to a certain degree, sort of a theater snob right and so <laughs> when I did when yeah. I when I did um this film a black and white film noir called Prescott Place I play a 1940s fallen star oh, cool. that becomes a recluse and confides in her baby doll that looks like her I also play the baby doll uh Chris Alexander the, not creepy at all not creepy at all this is why I'm single um <laughs> and besides other factors but um well the boobs yeah <laughs> yes Lack of, so um. Just cut down on the creep factor. So, and get you a nice set of you know <laughs> squishies, and you'll be on your way. You'll be married in no time. Goes back to sex. Anyway, um, so so Chris Alexander did did a uh, he he did a write up of the of the movie and this whole big thing. He went to Cannes Film Festival Short Corner, and he pegged it. He said, "Horror is going to knock on your door in three months." And I laughed and I said, you're talking to a New Yorker, it's not gonna happen. I don't know what you're talking about. I just did one thriller, forget it. Right. Yeah, it, three months later to a T, he got it. I, I, I was cast in Penny Dreadful Picture Show with Sid Haig and Jeffrey Combs. Right. Um, and then it snowballed and that's how I met Devaney Penn. Right, and that became a relationship with a certain film company um, that you've been in several films for. Mm -hmm. I have a couple trailers. Um, I wanted to, we have some pictures too we can throw up of Alexis. Um, I think what uh, the first thing that I saw you act in was the Black Dahlia Haunting, which mm -hmm. I had to force myself to watch because I am a wuss. Wuss, wuss, wuss. My name is Kitty and I'm a major pussy. Yeah, I'm it's true. Bodyguard. I can't deal with the horror. It scares me. And over it. I know, I know, I'm working on it, but I was able to. Yeah, we have some pictures up right now. Um, and the Black Dahlia Haunting. Yeah. It was a true story. Right. Um, it, Elizabeth Short um, was brutally, brutally murdered. Uh, mystery not solved, but sort of. Right. Um, they think it was this man by the name of Hodel. And. Um, uh, he was a, a dentist and used to throw uh, lavish uh, sex parties and was very good friends with John Huston. Right. The famous director. Back in the day. Uh, back in the day, who was Angelica Huston's um, father. Right. Uh, cut to uh, what people don't know is that uh, being a dentist was also being an, uh, an abortionist, so it was really abortion parties. Right. He also um, had a daughter by the name of Tamar that he um, used to rape repeatedly. Uh, and it's very eerie how, how, I don't know if this happens to you because you're, when you get in your roles, that's why 
That's why I cast her in Manson. <laughs> just to say, we'll get guilty. to that. Guilty. <laughs> um, She's guilty. <laughs> Always. You always um, have blood on you. I don't see how you could be innocent. <laughs> um, when I get into a role, uh, and not to be deep, it's like I, I swear I try not to be this deep person, but things come to me, so well, you, you deal with it. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, okay, well, this was this fell into my lap, therefore it's like I don't search for it. I'm not this, you know. So when I go into a role, it, it sort of seeks me out in return. Um, and played a, a, a true character. Um, I had a, a little. yeah, a few things started happening. Yep. And um, um, I, I actually uh, the the scene where I was brutally murdered um, was a real S and M joint. Right. Yeah. And you, we talked about this, I think, over beers once. And yeah. It, I it, might have ended up during that story going. La, 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 yeah. It was. Um, look, I'm I'm not a prude. I I I think I like to call myself a world traveler. I've been around. Blah blah yeah. blah. The whole thing. Um. Clearly, we, we covered that I hung out at a strip joint. Um, so, so yeah, uh, I went into the S&M joint, and, and there were gadgets and, and things. And it, it's disturbing. It, yeah, well, the worst part, <laughs> which I, after I did the scene, I had to, um, after I did the film, I had to go away for a bit. Starting to bite my lip. Yeah, I, um, <laughs> we had to do a debriefing. I'll, I'll, I'll speed it up. Uh, we had to do debri a debriefing. <laughs> And of a knife play because Cleve Hall was uh, the murderer. He didn't play Hodel. We had to, you know, the story wasn't based on Hodel. It was right. it's a paranormal film, but my character's true. Right. And so the there was a um, um, a sadist, a female, and she had this knife in her hand, and uh, and we were getting ready for the debriefing because uh, if you don't know, the Glasgow Smile is uh, people may know it from the Joker, but right. it was taken from. Elizabeth Short, because that's how she was murdered. Her face was slit from and her, on the, on the yeah. cheek and the inside, just yeah. like the Joker did. Yes, and, and her torso was it was just yeah. So uh, so we're getting ready for the debriefing, and Adrian Marcato, who's a brilliant FX, you know, his the makeup was just stunning. Yeah, no, um, it was it, which is why I have a hard time watching. <laughs> yeah, it, it. I have to say. And I, I don't mean to, I would be honest, I would say, well, because it is a very low budget film. A lot of people are going to like it, a lot of people aren't. It was very low, um, but for what we did and for the time, um, it was, it was, I, I was very proud of it. But the scene, the murder scene was... Um, Got a little creepy there. It true to its core because um, the sadist... Tell me what happened in the basement. The sadist uh, thought she was really going to cut my face. The madam. Yeah, she 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 didn't think it was a debriefing. She did not know it was just teaching us how to deal with a knife. She, she thought she was going. She to thought she was cut. going to to cut me on film. On film. So. And she got the whole place went silent. I I actually and it takes a lot for me to to. And I looked at Devaney Penn, who is the producer and the lead in the film, and her 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 boyfriend Brandon Slagle, who's director. Um, Devaney's face, we made eye contact. It was like, and I I did that, and, and she was like, no, 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 wait, hold on. She was like, no, 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 this is a mainstream movie. This is a real actress. This is, uh, like, we were all like, uh, uh, uh. Yeah. and I looked at Devaney, and I got sick, and I said, let's start rolling. Like, I was, you felt you it was in it. were that creeped out. It was, well, so. Well, that scene with you is just fantastic. So she was there to guide the, the guy that was playing the, and we're going to watch the trailer right now. Um, I'm going to hook that up. Uh, we are ready to do that. And by the way, technology is amazing. I get to press play, and my fantastic engineer and producer has hooked it up so that I can press play, and then you can see this. I love you, Caitlin. Caitlin. It's amazing. I just I can't even... Can't even. Anyway, so this is going to be the full trailer for The Black Dahlia Haunting, mm -hmm. the horror film out by Microbate Pictures with our beautiful... And still alive with cheeks intact, thank God. <laughs> Actress Alexis Iacono. Um, watch the trailer, and then you can actually rent this immediately on Redbox and iTunes. So if you can handle it, Godspeed. Okay. Will Tyler Should it be going? Do you have some I'm screen. Need to know if it's true. Oh, well, all right. Hold on one second. Black Dahlia again. All right. Oh, that's I know, thing. right? They no. won't allow us. Well, no, it's not a joke. Every time I mention the Black Dahlia, um, uh, um, 
the circuits go down, it's weird. Mm, speaking of technology, I, you know, that was my fault. Ask Devening. Technology is amazing. Are you getting anything, so, sir? Nightmares. Okay. I'll call you when I get to Watch this, guys. Will Give Tyler sound. remember you? He's blind. Okay. I need to know if it's true. Yes. He killed his parents. Is this someone you used to know? Who? Yeah. You're drawing. It's of a woman. I'm not drawing anyone. Person. The Black Dahlia was a nickname that the Los Angeles press gave to a woman, Elizabeth Short, after she was killed. So why would Tyler be drawing her? I don't know. Just like with your brother, I'm gonna help you hurt the ones who hurt you. <laughs> she won't follow us anymore. I still will hear the voices inside. the ones you heard me. Her name's Elizabeth. Do the um, the convention circuit for Dahlia. With all it, the horror, it, it got to the point where people. I, I remember walking into um, the convention, one of the conventions. It was actually Scarecon, and like, not to downplay it, but it was just like Devony and Brandon were like, "Look, we're doing this film. Uh, it's going to be this, this, this and that." And, right. and they don't do anything half-assed anyway. But we didn't think it was <laughs> going to get distribution and. My face was going to be on buses in L.A. Like, it was just like yeah. uh, this thing. It sort of exploded. But I remember walking into one of the conventions, and people started wearing the faces. So for me, it was um, – it, it took a while because I'm, I'm very new to the convention circuit, and I'm actually – I should be doing more, and I, I pulled back. I had to. On the horror, yeah. Well, I mean, I think we've talked about that um, the last few episodes here. When you get to a certain level or you're in a certain genre and fans are so entranced and obsessive, it, you can go to Comic-Con and be completely overwhelmed. Um, and it's just the sheer volume of information that we have available to us. Mm -hmm. So if your personal life is in the limelight at all, mm -hmm. including your name... People can find you, yeah. and it, it can get very scary. It can get very limiting, and um, then you have some people that can handle it, and some people who can't. So. I, I go through small doses, like like I was supposed to do a few things this year, and I I I, I, I couldn't. You just needed time I to. I can do it. Well, I mean, I think that's smart. You have to know your limits. You and I have talked about that, um, and yeah. So Black Dolly Hunting did very well. It's still going strong, and. Um, and it's funny, you know, you, you do, I do a film like Dahlia and, and Dead Sea, which we'll get to. And, right. But, but I'll skip to Manson real quick. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> when um, I, I was very happy not to be in Manson, um, clearly because of, of um, I just. You needed a break. I needed it. a break from it. And yeah. uh, it sounds very dramatic, but what people <laughs> don't understand is that when you do horror, um, it's not just a film. You bring a certain uh, element out of people. So, right. And some actors and people are different. I I get some some crazy people. So I, it's like I'm still doing the horror. Like no one's gonna stop me. Like screw that. Like clearly. But I just I, I needed to I need to pick and choose a little bit. So when Brandon and Devin were like, listen, we're not gonna cast you a Manson because Penny Dreadful I basically slaughtered and tortured a cheerleader, which was, which was fun. You enjoyed that. Being a cheerleader, again, 
freaks me the heck out. I mean, as horror yeah. as I can handle by yeah. myself on my couch yeah. is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> That's really, yeah. that is my love, like, yeah. I mean, suspense, like yeah. Hitchcock, I can take that. Yeah. But Buffy, totally... By the way, mm. side note, speaking mm. of starting in horror, mm. if you can call Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the movie, not the show, okay. the original, um, I watched it again, all, you know, about a month and a half ago, I guess, and there is a certain person credited as basketball player number 10, <laughs> you? who says, Wait. no, 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 I wasn't even born. Oh, oh I was like... Was I born? I, I don't like, know, I'm bad at math. I was like, a basketball player, you were... Right, no. I would have been, like, the cheerleader if I had been alive then. No, um, there is a male basketball player in the scene where the vampire kid comes back and is playing basketball, kind of like a, you know, Ode to the Werewolf scene, Michael J. Fox. Um, But Ben Affleck, basketball player number 10. It was one of his first ever credits. If you look on um, IMDb, which is Internet Movie Database, it's kind of a resume of all actors and directors and producers. It's everything that they've done, and they keep track of it um, online. So you can go to imdb.com. You can look up Alexis Iacono. You can look up The Black Dahlia Haunting. You can look up... Um, Caitlin Gazepis. Yeah, I'm sure Caitlin Gazepis. You can look up everything you want. Yes, please look me up. Caitlin Gazepis. <laughs> She's going to say that. C-A-I-T-L-I-N. K-A-Z-E-P-I-S. Um, but no, if you look up Ben Affleck, it's one of his very first credits, and I love that. I, I like, freeze-framed it oh, for a second. Oh, how funny is that? Because he says, like, two things. He gets a basketball thrown at his chest by the creepy vampire, and the vampire kid comes up to him and goes, hey, and Ben Affleck goes, here, take it, or something like that. And he, he just like, here. And I was like, that's Ben Affleck. That's awesome. So, I mean, start, hey, you start somewhere. Clearly not knocking it. I love every minute of it. I, yeah, That's the fun part. You look back at yep. that. Like, Manson, I mean, you got me into that. Kind of, I mean, it wasn't It wasn't even supposed to be a real role. In the film, they didn't have a lot of space. And you put me in, and I had a blast. Yeah, I, I, I was very happy when they approached me. They were like, because I, I told them, I said, look, you know, I, I did Dahlia, Dead Sea, which we'll, we'll get to. Yeah, and yeah. I, I, it's just like... They were doing Manson, and I, I remember emailing them saying, honestly, I mean, look, I'm a ham. Like, if you have something for me, great. I thought, she, I thought we said you were a boob. <laughs> yeah, that, too, that too, but Only we'll get to that later. Schizophrenia. <laughs> And the studio. <laughs> what are you talking about? Stop it. I don't know. It's like, I'm normal. That's Ma. She's one of my, you know, <laughs> we all have schizophrenia to a certain extent, I think. Yeah. But, like, mine tend to go, like, Muppet level. And mm-hmm. Ma no. is the Jewish mother in my head, and no. she comes alive at certain no, points. No, no Muppets, Muppets. We're not, that's a little creepy. What? Uh, Muppets are creepy? Not being a, uh, you're giving me attitude also? What the, I agree. Are you guys double teamed? What the hell? Well, hi, a sadist it was in a an little, S&M basement. Uh, you know, Kermit, kind of creepy. Oh, my God. I think Am we I just had radio crickets? silence. Yeah, I couldn't. Do we have crickets? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we gotta, I gotta get a soundboard. Puppets and Muppets are just, and clowns, I can't do it. Oh, okay, oh and right, cow's clown? tongue, I can't have cow's tongue, I'm not very big on cow's tongue with the crease and you open the sandwich what? and you just, my mom, when I was Ooh, a young girl, gro- okay, okay la, wait, la, no, wait, la, my mom, when, my mom, la, my mom, la, my mom when, when I was a young girl, she used to make me epic sandwiches as, as a young girl and I used to have my little, my little lunch box and my little thermos mm. and I was very happy, I was a happy little girl and so... One day, I was like, oh, I wonder what she's making me. And I, I'm not the, the type of person that that smells food. Like, I have friends. Do you do? No, you don't smell food, do you? I have, like, I had friends that would, like, open and smell the food. It's like, you're not shoving it up your nose. So just shove My it in your mouth. My cat does that. Right. So I <laughs> never, ever, ever looked at her sandwiches. Right. You just shoved it in your mouth. This, Like right. a trusting individual Woman. eating food in America. Yes. Young girl. We got lucky. Absolutely. We don't have to sniff our food. Absolutely not. Survival instinct. Of course. So get to the point. Yeah. Point is, young lady, is that this one day, as a little girl, my my spidey senses, my weird little, ah, I was, you know, I don't know. This is this is strange. Things are strange today for me. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna open up my sandwich. And mom gave me tongue. Okay. First of all, I just want that to be heard in context. Please don't use that as a sound bit anywhere. 
um, <laughs> apologies to Nancy, Alexis's mother. No, that's really no apologies. Convenient. That's scum. <laughs> Okay. Well, because we, because I, there are support groups for all of this, but I don't know if there's one for my mom made me a cow tongue sandwich when I was in. No, grade it was there was a out. crease. The crease was still okay, there. I'm not, you know, as someone that barely eats meat, please stop. Okay. There was the crease, and there was. And Kermit is scary. I'm just saying. That's listen. Come on, you know my brain. It's not normal. It's not. Kermit's creepy. SM joint. You know what else is creepy? It. Creature features. <laughs> Moving on. So, you were in Black Dahlia Haunting. You've been on stage as the younger Fay Ray as a child, which yes. is very, very cool. Yes. And then um, Black Dahlia Haunting did well, and uh, Micro Bay decided to make a creature feature. Yes. And and I play a Victoria Mrs. a marine biologist that goes uh, on I assignment. Think we have some pictures too. Uh, with Etsy. Goes on assignment uh, to check out why. Fish are like dying, you know, they're dead and right. like droves. And so it's I, like an environmental investigation. Yes. Right. Um, as I'm eating my tuna sandwich. Right. So, um, <laughs> where was that tuna from? I don't know. Yeah, Probably no. Japan. Did it have three eyes? We'll never know. Thanks, FDA. Anyway, keep going. Yes, carry on. Um, <laughs> so, mm, so, um, so, yes, so I worked, uh, we, we, we shot in, um, Let's see, no, uh, I'm blanking out. Where did we shoot? Um, well, you were out in the, you, was, you shot out in the desert. Yeah, desert. Um, uh, and then where was that lake that you shot at? Do you remember? Uh, that was Big Bear. That was up in Big Bear. I remember that you going to do that. That was fun, because we had our own condo and jacuzzi, and it was just... Wow, sounds like a low-budget film to me. Yeah. My, low, my, my, uh, my understanding of low-budget films from the ones that I've been in, maybe someone was duping me, but it's kind of like, oh, here's the back seat of my station wagon right. with a, you know, icy cooler, and you get two Capri Suns. Don't drink them all at once because we have oh, a 10-hour like shoot. Oh, I like you pop the little yep, straw you pop the little, thing. and you hear the, and then you just yeah. suck it. It goes well with a cow tongue sandwich. And then you squeeze You're at the making your kids lunch. It's just like, and you get the last that's really, that's fun. Right. Speaking of fun, we are going to watch the Dead Sea trailer. Um, and Dead Sea is actually up on Amazon now. I'm sorry? Reset it. Oh, okie dokie. Sorry, I'm resetting my Wirecast so that I can do the cool thing where it shoots to the video screen so that you can see the full trailer of Dead Sea. And you can pre-order, you were able to pre-order on Amazon, now you can buy it on Amazon.com and watch it tonight after you watch Black Dahlia Haunting and have a nice little halftime show with a cow tongue sandwich. Right? Sorry, Mom. Hmm. Yeah, sorry, that was, Nancy. That was me throwing you under the bus. <laughs> Enjoy the trailer, everybody. It is playing. It's playing. It's supposed to be playing. Is it playing? Yeah, it's thinking. Do we have music? Hi. Okie dokie then. I can reenact it. So, yeah, okay, so we're going to do a total reenactment of Dead Sea since it's taking a while to load. Um, oh my god! There are fish dead in the sea! Roar! Oh no, not Roar! that! I don't Roar! like fish! Roar! Oh my god! Go Roar! run! It's almost as good as Sharknado. And hopefully, this time, we will get. <laughs> Some loading and enjoy the trailer, everybody. Here we go, Dead Sea. Do we have sound? I like every I got too. something for you. Really? Fish washing up dead on a lake shore. I need someone to check out the toxicity before the state can improve funding to take care of it. Yeah. You heard that, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Yes. And you're here to find out why the fish are dying? Yes. That's your reason. Every 30 years, it shows up. And it feeds. Bum, bum, bum. Bogo, Loch Ness. Cool. Where do you think all those stories come from? It's a serpent. A monster. I originally 
already know for a fact that it is impossible to have a series of interconnected tunnels that link into every body of water for an escape route for a monster. And you know there's no logical scientific explanation for what's going on. Cannot stay here. It's for your own good. Okay, so I'm sweating. Anybody else scared? Of course I surf. So like I'm used to strange, crazy creatures mm -hmm. in the ocean. I'm okay being in water where you can't see your feet. I just, the fake stuff coming out of the deeps when I'm sitting on my couch, that creeps me out. Right. Mm -hmm. That makes sense, right? Absolutely not. No. I'm it insane. <laughs> no. Side note. Yes. Just found out. Um, Dead Sea. Yeah. Uh, will be premiering in the UK. <gasps> Just found out two nights ago. That's awesome. At the Bram Stoker Film Festival. Oh, high fives. Thank you. Yeah. Um, fang fives. <laughs> yeah. Yes. TM. TM. <laughs> Trademark. <laughs> yes. All right. We 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 uh we're premiering. We're very excited. Uh, do I want to go? Yes. Can I? Um, you yeah. know because we have this you know little project that we're co-producing. So All right, excited. so let's get into that, like, really quickly. Um, okay. So. We're producers. Right. We're working on producing, and it's, like, totally going to be, like, awesome. <laughs> and, and so we woke up one morning and said, let's make a movie. Oh, my God. Like, totes. <laughs> I'll make a movie with you. Okay. And, and I did say this. Mm -hmm. I did say this, because we were brainstorming mm -hmm. over... Tea and schnapps. Tea and pepper, peppermint schnapps. Well, I like, yeah, it's peppermint schnapps and my peppermint tea. I yes. am 85 years old. Betty White and I spike our tea, and we drink it on the porch and talk about sex. I'm sorry. That's just my Friday night. Yeah, we were we were old ladies that night. That was like, that, that, was, that was pretty much. Uh, Every night. <laughs> yes. I enjoy mm. that. And I, we were talking, and I remember I was staring at you, and I was like, we should do something. Like I, this. Yes, like <laughs> this. But I did say, I said. It's not going to be a movie about boys. We're not doing something stupid. It has to be something. It has to have some yeah, gusto to it. No, it has to have more boots. Yeah. And then we had a pillow fight, and one thing led to another, <laughs> and, and everybody then, does it in college. And then everything just came off. And we made a movie. And we made a movie. <laughs> and you can get it now online. Just kidding. Uh, just no. kidding. Just try, try and Google it. If you can find a sex tape... That has me in it online right now. Yeah, and yeah, that I, would please be, send it to me immediately. That would be privately. under that would be under comedysketches.com. <laughs> Wait, what are you trying to say? No, me, not you. They would your oh. your your ratings would go. I would just be a fucking tool. <laughs> anyway, have so that said. Have that said. She was there's the, a pun there, but I'm there not there is. Point she'll it out. she'll she'll come back. She'll She's it'll go back. She's the tool. Get it? Oh, God. Should I give a visual? Oh, no. Nope. Okay. Save All right. Me. So back to our little project. So we did. We we had a conversation. Yeah. I was actually a little depressed at that point, if you don't recall, because we had just wrapped Manson. Oh. And I think all all creative people go through this process where you're manic. If you're not if you're not actually bipolar and you don't actually have mania, then you have like a version of creative mania. Yeah. And if you're a very, very good professional or you keep yourself in check, you can control that mania mm -hmm. and you can come out of the depression that follows that mania gracefully as possible. Um, a lot of people that do method acting do that. Daniel Day-Lewis, for example, when he does a role like when he did There Will Be Blood, mm -hmm. Coen Brothers, just a very dark, deep role. Um, after that, he disappeared for a little while. Yeah. While they were doing post-production work for three months, he just went out of the public eye so that he could come back out of that role, kind of rehab yourself. And when you're putting all of your emotions out there, it does take a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. And you kind of have to, I have to give myself like a, you know, Hansel and Gretel crumb trail yeah. back, to, oh, sure. back to reality. Because it, I think when, speaking of horrific uh, deaths, we've, we've gone through Robin Williams and Joan and, I mean, different 
you know, different styles of death, but Heath Ledger really affected me because I was just angry. Yeah. He did a dark role, like you were saying. It was basically the sadist in the basement. Again, he played the Joker in The Dark Knight, which is probably the most, what's my favorite yeah. film in the Batman series. Yeah. And it's the best made film, I think, as far as character portrayal and, and with you with those story arcs. He went very, very dark, mm -hmm. and he just didn't come out of it. And I was so angry because at that level, with that mm -hmm. much money and that much at stake, yep. where was everybody in his life to bring him back? Cory Monteith did the same thing, although he didn't go as dark for a specific role. Yep. I really wish that we we had, as creative people, yep. more of a crumb trail, an organized crumb trail. Well, yeah. And and that's, it's funny, because the car ride over, we were talking about how... Um, need a break. Need, need a vacation. Like, I, I mean... Uh, it's not weakness. It's, it's, it, no, no, and it's creative. Look, high-class problems. I mean, look what we're talking Absolutely. about. I mean, there, there are actors out there, and I've, we've been there when, when the phones weren't ringing, and there was nothing, and you're like... You start to panic and think, what am I doing with my life? Right. And, and it's just like, you have so much creativity. It's like, well, there's so much that I know I can do, but it's not so much look at me, look at me, but it's like, how do I go out? You know, it's like you sort of hit a wall. Yeah. And we're, we're always, and I can speak for you, we're go-getters. Can you? Yes. We're <laughs> go-getters. And, and I think that's why we're, we're the yin and the yang. Like the, the days when we have production meetings for Pipeline, the days that I'm absolutely frantic and crazy because... You've seen me a few times, a little, a little fran frantic. Yep. Um, <clears throat> That's when I take out the straight jacket and yeah. I just pour schnapps down her throat. Yeah, yeah. You know. And so, so that's why we work well. Is that when I'm on crazy mode, um, you're for some reason always calm. And then when <laughs> I've seen you, absolutely like, I mean, you're crazy. It's it's more visual. I love it. What? No, your hair <laughs> is like crazy hair and oh. you're like walking to me and I'm like Phew. you can see me coming go oh, oh, no it's gonna be this day and I'm like thank god I'm calm so it's like it works out but we have so much of this creativity to to you know let out yeah sometimes it's but back to Daniel Day-Lewis and the, and the crumbs um and with me with horror films um you see how I'm comparing myself to Daniel Day-Lewis um yeah you're about twice the size of him. I'm funny and delusional. -wise. He's so, he's not, he's not a large stature man. Hmm. I remember watching, uh, well, oh, God, Last of the Mohicans. Oh, God, and that score. Mm -hmm. I mean, that movie. But Daniel Day-Lewis in the water. I will find you. And then he jumps to the waterfall. <laughs> and he just looks like a massive man. And then when I met him finally, wait, so a men few years don't ago, jump through waterfalls? Well, he would have, but he, oh. I mean, other men have, but <laughs> they don't say the line right, or you know, they're yeah. really not my type. No, no, bad hair day. Yeah, yeah. Does I don't it? like when they don't have a good hair day and they jump through the waterfall. Then it's just like, mm. yeah, yeah. I'll call if you it. care about hair. Obviously, I do so much work. Um, no, uh, but anyway, he's a very small man. My point is, mm. you and I both know that's smart way. You, yes. we have to, you have to have people around yeah. you that can give you a reality check. Mm -hmm. You have to have a base for reality in your life that doesn't have to do with creative yeah. outlets. Yep. Um, however, I, we were very calmly discussing over tea on my on my patio. That's right. Manson and, and Manson it was just, and just wrapped and... I was like, I don't have anything in my yeah. life. And by the way, like, I know we're, we're segueing once again. It's the Italian Greeks in one room. We're just going to jump around. But I promise there will be an ending somewhere. Um, yeah, when about I, 20 minutes when the show's over. <laughs> when, when uh, and after. Yeah. <laughs> when we have our tummies. Anyway, so uh, she played, I knew, she, she's. Burgers, she, not guns. She said tommies. We oh, are yeah, no, Greek. no. I'm not eating Tommy. Right. Well, we're not cannibalizing anyone, and we don't have. No. We don't have uh, semi-automatic weapons. And I'm, 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 yeah. We're talking about the burger I'm not joint. Really, Tommy's Burgers. That wouldn't be I just wanted nice to put it out to there. do to Tommy anyway. Tommy would be very scared. So we're having the burger, Tommy's Burger. Yeah. Um, so Gypsy, um, I saw the breakdown right. of the roles, and um, I clicked immediately. I, I said, Caitlin, <laughs> you got to, you got to screen, you got to self-tape immediately. Yeah. And I, I have to say, and I'm not saying this because she's my friend, um, 
Yeah, you did some self tape, girl. <laughs> well, I did two different things. And, and I didn't... sent it to Devonie and Brandon, and like within 30 seconds, they're like, please cast her now. And I'm like, oh. oh. So I decided not to do that and wait for a few days. Yeah, and I'm have kind Caitlin of say, hi, hey, have you heard? I'm like, no. Um, I promise you will we'll hear something. And I remember I was driving in the car. In this traffic. is the first time hearing of this story. Uh, Hollywood Boulevard I was in traffic. And I said, I don't think I'm going to tell her now. I just wait it out. So I remember saying, Kay, listen, um, I got feedback on Manson. And I'm thinking, that's exactly how she said it. And I'm like, and she's like, yeah. I'm like, look, here's the deal. <laughs> and I, I did the douchey. You're really talented. Uh, and, you know, I don't want you to give up. You're really, you're, you just. Meanwhile, you, you just, I'm sharpening my you knives. Just, you just sparkle <laughs> when you're, when you walk in a room and I, put this horrifically fake shit and then like there's a pause and I'm like you got the part and all I hear is bleep bleep she's just like you fucking bitch I'm like, I'm like well I knew about it for days I just you know I just wanted to just you know let she's it fester jerk. just let it fester and just have you suffer well mm. I had a great time yeah. doing, doing that self tape because we didn't know yeah because Gypsy is a singer and of course I sing and yeah. um Damn. so it was good singer thank you well, it was an interesting way to do things. Is I so I did a I did a self tape with Janis Joplin, and I gotta tell you, I would love to play that. I mean, Gypsy yeah, was well, fantastic as well, well but yeah. at some point in my life, I would like to play Janis Joplin. I think you would I could nail pull it. it would be great. Yeah, no, she she mixed Gypsy and um, because in the film, Gypsy doesn't have a lot of dialogue, but she's in throughout the whole film. So I told her, I I said, listen, you're smart. Look at the script. If you find dialogue that you think connects to Gypsy or whatever, just wing it. You're, you know, you know. And, and she, she did. So she, there was that whole creative process. And I was, I was actually supposed to be on set. And uh, you'll know, I, I, the, the murder scenes and all yeah. the scenes I was supposed to be there. And um, people didn't know, but I, I, um, I had a legitimate excuse. But the truth is, um, didn't want to open up that door again. It's very dark. Um, I think I the was thing... already in it, and right. I, I that's why I said yes to casting immediately. Um, I was very, very, I made myself very um, dedicated, and thanks to Mel Turner, um, she really helped me with the oh, casting. Oh, we love Mel. Yeah, but uh, I, I also, I also um, made myself very, very removed from the project. Well, I mean, it's another again. It's based in reality. I was um, doing my classes at UCLA, and I mentioned it because we would talk about our other work and how that relates to our creative process. And I was doing the writers program at UCLA for screenwriting, and um, one of my professors was like, "Caitlin, what are you working on?" And I was like, "Actually, I'm gonna miss a uh, class next week, and I'm doing this." And she goes, "Oh, I remember the Mansons." She goes, "I was here. I lived in LA." it changed the world mm -hmm. and it was kind of like their generation's 9-11 it was a it was a serial attack mm -hmm. on people um, without any provocation that anyone knew of at the time right and it was very scary and people stopped giving rides to hitchhikers they stopped it was a very open time well it was so open that um, I don't know if you know this but my my parents even though they're they're Brooklynites and long Lower East Siders they, they lived in during that time uh, Redondo Beach in LA. Okay, so they were here. Uh, Kittredge. Every when I crossed over Kittredge, that they lived on Kittredge. Yeah. So they were in the middle. My dad um, was is still a photographer, Sports Illustrated, but at the yeah. time he was freelancing for Time Life. Uh, so he was doing magazine. He was freelancing for Time Life, Life Magazine, and Sports Illustrated. And at the time, they said, "Can you cover um, a sketch artist? Um, she is in in the." Um, courthouse sketching Manson Whew. and she feels that she feels his presence yeah and I it's don't want to I don't want to tell too much of a story because and he doesn't know this but I want to pitch it to actually Fangoria magazine I'm a contributing writer at, at Fangoria which is a horror fan which is a magazine you can look it up online it's mm -hmm. fantastic and so I also go under under a pseudonym so a lot of the times when I do the articles um it's not under my name but I think for this if if they green like this um I'd like to write about uh, my parents experience but cut to uh, no more hitchhikers were being picked up and also LA especially in the hills everyone had their door open there was no such thing as a lock yeah I mean the, the Hollywood the, Hills the were next, open you would go to parties if yeah, people would come walk and in and out just walk I mean you can just walk in and out the hotels go. were like that too yep and as the, the day after 
shut down. I think that's when the alarm systems like when it came into Yeah, play. it was a good time to be in business. Yeah. Well, we actually, we've played the trailer before, mm-hmm. um, but we now have a full official trailer yes. out for me, and so I'm very excited. We don't have a release date exactly yet, but, but, uh, but it um, will be soon. A world premiere, on, oh, maybe you can put it on the site, but I uh, Devaney announced that there's going to be a world premiere announcement tomorrow for House of Manson. Ah, I'm very excited. Okay, well, we're going to play the full official trailer for you, and then we'll be back with much lighter talk, I promise, after this, but enjoy... House of Manson from Micro Bay Pictures. I don't know how I'm going to make it through this movie either. Is it playing? Okay. Sweet. Were you present at the Tate killings, Susan? I'm going to talk about um, yes. pipeline. I'm pipeline. Pipeline, real quick, and then I'm going to mention my fabulous McDonald's one because we're going to burgers. And um, let's focus on uh, let's wrap it back around to why we're doing the short film. Yes. And then uh, the short uh, synopsis. Okie dokie. So, I'm seriously sweating again, and it's not because of the studio lights, it's because I really can't ha- I'm. She can't handle it. She's not being dramatic. She can't handle it. It's I'm just, not, it's not me. It's not you. I know, um, and, it, and it's it's sort of not me either. It, the horror genre really fell into my lap, and it's funny, we're talking serious that, that I, I, I'm a writer for Fangoria, I'm a contributing writer for Fangoria, I, I, I write for horror. Yeah. What? Well, I did want to ask real quick. Um, you're going to be in an upcoming documentary. Yes. Right, and it's yes. about and it's full circle. It's um, uh, Frank Dietz. He is the animator for Mulan and Tarzan and all these wonderful uh, Disney uh, films. Disney films. Mm-hmm. Um, I was invited to an event, uh, David Scales event, a few months ago. I'm friends with David and his uh, his girlfriend Carrie, and he was doing an Outer Limits uh, signing at Creature Features. So I go and I walk in. Big I, scary monster movies. Well, no, no, no. Actually, <laughs> Creature Features is an actual store. Oh, yeah. I'm so, sorry. So it's it's also all of the genre. Yeah, yeah, and 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 it's like all old films. Oh, like that's right. Down here in Burbank, right? Yes. Yeah. I know nothing about it. I'm like, all right. I walk in and there's Fay Ray everywhere in King Kong, and I'm like, so cool. But also for me, it, it touched upon my childhood. So I'm like, right. What the hell is this? I go and there's a, a group of my friends, Carrie, and everyone's there. And I'm being very oblivious and naive, and I'm like, oh, you know, when I was younger, I played Faye on stage, and I knew her. <laughs> I was friends with her. We were pen pals and friends up until her death. I knew Faye personally after the show. We bonded immediately. Um, and and I went through this very short, quick, you know, thing, and this man was next to me. He says, can you repeat that? And I said, um, <laughs> sure. And uh, he said, um, what are you doing next weekend? And I said, um, so stupid. I'm like, I don't know. What am I doing next weekend? Oh, and geez, I know. Well, I did. I did. And he laughed and he said, are you familiar with Monster Palooza? And I said, yes, I do. And he said, uh, I'm finishing up on a documentary. And he said, um, it's about King Kong and Fay Ray. It's so cool. And I'm like, oh. So what's that going to be called? It's going to be, it's called Long Live the King. Um, awesome. Um, I'm attached to it. I just did the interview. Um, uh, Frank Ippolito, uh, uh, Greg Nicotero, the director of, uh, um, um, Dead. Yep. Evil Dead. No. No. Um. Walking Dead. Walking Dead. Sorry. Sorry. Mer- Walking Dead. Zombies. P- please cast me. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. And um, just found out, and I'm totally gonna brag because I'm really excited. Peter Jackson's attached. That's very cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, yeah. when you look at when you look at uh, films throughout the ages. What we've been able to come up with with graphics, I, we have friends that have been in a lot of sci-fi films. I love the old sci-fi mystery mm-hmm. stuff, even though, you know, a lot of it is sexist. A lot of it, the graphics are bad. If there are any graphics, special effects are a joke, and it's part of the genre, and we love it because of the evolution of film. Like my little mistakes with technology, so it's going to be more endearing than it is detracting from the art. Right. Uh, let's hope, but. Um, other than that, uh, so that 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 is going to be slated. It was supposed to be slated for um, for 2014, but but 
since Peter's Jackson's now attached, we're waiting for his interview. And we're, I think Frank and Trish Geiger, she, his producing partner um, for Benevol Benevolent Productions, um, uh, we're doing something, I think, in October, but as of 2015, we're, so we're starting be out early festivals and all that stuff. Very cool. And with that, um, and with documentary, um, now we're doing, you know, Pipeline. Right. Yeah. So Pipeline is our little project that we came up with. Um, it was kind of a creative outlet for me to come out of my post-Manson depression, which sounds like an actual disease. Yes. Um, but... Thank gosh we had that conversation, and it got the ball rolling, mm -hmm. and I just sat down and wrote it. So we have a short film um, that we will be shooting. We're going to do a Kickstarter for it uh, very soon. I'll be covering that on here, so if you want to help us make a film, please go ahead and do so. The pipeline will be about a young woman, uh, played by Alexis, whose father dies, and he leaves a trust fund to her tied to a mysterious name. That'd be me. <laughs> so, it'll be fun. It's about the Trans-Alaska oil pipeline. There's going to be a lot of Native American influence. We're very excited. I don't and mean to cut in, but why she's, are you laughing? I'm laughing because the, the segment, you got a commercial. She was like, um, when we get back, we're going to talk on a lighter note. <laughs> right. This isn't light at all. Her father dies. Okay. It's a pipeline. So, a lighter note. It is Thursday night after all. Um, you guys know that I'm a contributing writer and that one of my best friends runs a mini zine online. You can look at it for strapped zine. Um, dot com. Please look it up. She just came out with a new um, issue, and this volume is about anger. The last one was forgiveness, and now we're just getting a little more angry. And it looks beautiful. It's a fantastic mini zine. You can read it. You can look up for it at Facebook dot com backslash strapped zine. You can go to scribed dot com, mm -hmm. which is where you can like read online mm -hmm. issues of magazines. Um, and then, also, I wanted to do a little brag. Uh, I'm not huge on product placement. However, and we have some footage um, of the upcoming fall fashion, uh, a lot of designers are doing cravings. And included in that is some inspired by a fast food joint. Um, we're going to throw up some pictures of that real quick. And it's for the brand Machino. Oh, dear God. And it's McDonald's. Yeah, that's Katy Perry. They have earrings, necklaces, purses. And I thought this was hilarious because I came home um, after going to a garage sale and picking up a little thing. <laughs> I saw in the newspaper, Paul Cravings with a big Machino ad. You can see the big purse there um, with a French fry purse. And I thought, oh! and I ran my buddy. <sighs> a 13 year old girl she got some cool stuff too and I go OMG she, remember what I got at the yard school. sale yeah that's right this is probably a promo item it was still in the plastic that's awesome it's like 1970s that's awesome I mean it's that's great. genuine this is a genuine article so sorry Machino I'm not gonna pay $750 for your darned brand ripoff purse when I got mine for a dollar in Woodland Hills. I love it. Thanks. I love it. That's awesome. That's really cool. That's a cool bag. I'm pretty excited. You can hold it if you want. <gasps> really? And it looks like oh a real God. French fry thing. I just gotta get some like foam. Do I look good? Wait, I think I'm gonna get some yellow wait, foam. Do I look and make French does, fries? Does red like? It's it, you. Do I look pale? It looks better on me, but I'm just saying. Okay. So speaking of McDonald's, we are actually going to go and have a non-professional date. <sighs> And just get to chill out. I have recently started eating meat again because, and only, a joke that's not, I know, I was going to say, it's not a sex joke. We'll get to that next week. Tune in. Jason. Um, <laughs> this is what happens when you hang out with girls. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just as bad as boys. <laughs> not worse. Well, I was mostly vegetarian, a little pescatarian, and then, um, unfortunately, my body was not processing vitamins, so... I have anemia, and I have to take iron pills and get more iron in my body. Yeah. So they said two to three times a week I have to eat some ground beef or bison is really high in yeah. iron count. Yes. Um, there's some, like, lentils Kale. I'm and addicted kale. to kale. Yep. I love kale, cream spinach. And so. I remember when... Three weeks ago, we were just in New York, and we were just yep. saying, wow, it felt like a year ago. We were doing B-roll for, um, for Pipeline. Mm -hmm. um, and... 
she didn't tell me, you didn't tell me what was wrong, and I, I remember we were sitting, I think it was Brass Monkey, mm-hmm. and she out of nowhere was like, like her face just went, I'm like, I was exhausted. Yeah, you were. Because it makes you, look, you tired. You better. You do. Well, I am now eating a little bit of meat, um, although I would much prefer that they make it in a lab with no animals being grown or killed or harmed and with no GMOs and with no pharmaceuticals, but... But no, so we're going to Tommy's. We're going to Tommy's. I'm going to eat a burger. And... I can't wait. Right now. I'm going to walk in with my McDonald's. McDonald's bag and see what they say about that. And if they have a problem with it, I'll be like, well, you know what? You should totally make your own line of fashion accessories to show off your burgers. So ladies, <laughs> get out there. Show off your burgers. Eat your fries. Dip them in your Frosties. Oh, That's yes. my favorite at Wendy's. You get a Frosty and you take your French fries and you dip the French fry in the Frosty. What's a Frosty? Hands of God. Oh, it's like a mini milkshake. Oh, fro- oh, I thought frosty. it was like a... I thought it was like a ranch dressing or something. Oh, oh you no. mean like an actual frosty? It's a frosty. Oh, you mean like a dessert? You dip, you dip, yep. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's salt, salt and sweet. Oh, and hot and cold. Yep. Great. Mm-hmm. Anyway, thank you so much for being on, Alexis. You're welcome. I love you. I love you too. And you can IMDb us if you want yes. to. Please and tune in next week for Alley Cat Hour and what? Twitter and all that. Whatever. Oh yeah, she does like media. I go back and forth. Media. We were talking about that. Ah, I'm right now. I'm back. I'm back in the ball game. There. Are Times where I purged and I deactivated and deleted and I was just like, ah, I'm now, now, I'm back. Right, she's got her balls on. I got my balls so, on. So, go check out her balls, check out my boobs, come back and listen next week. We love you kittens. Have a wonderful weekend. This is the KXSR Digital Broadcast Network. Yes. Fun show!